Hi, Bar Fortin, Bar Specialty Tools, McCall, Idaho. Today's sharpening video, I'm going to tune up a chair builder's draw knife. I have a series of diamond stones, uh, I have a Japanese water stone, and a strop that I've made with uh, thin pieces of cedar and some leather with a uh, buffing compound on it. This works really, really well if you don't have a buffer available. This is a great way to go right here. <clears throat> so, the primary goal here is to keep the bottom or the top flat, and we don't want to get any kind of bevel coming down from the top towards the edge. This is a bevel side down knife. That's how it works. And in order for it to work like a chisel, then we need to keep that back flat keep it tuned up nicely. So the first thing I'll do is I will go to this diamond stone that's up on this pedestal. Now this is a coarser stone. This is a, a 320 grit. I have some uh, uh, simple green and water on there to give me a little bit of a cleansing action. And I'm going to lay that on there. Get my glasses on here because I can't see anything. And then you want to just make sure you keep that Nice and flat. Don't cheat it. You just want to feel it. And you can see that the handles are clearing the stone. Now the other technique you can use here, if you don't have a stone with this kind of clearance, or you can block your stone up on a 2x4 and put blocks, you know, fore and aft to keep it from moving. The trickiest part is to not rock it, of course. And I've done quite a few of these. All right, we're going to apply some more simple green. Keep that stone clean. Put that over there. And you can, you know, it is a little tricky. You need to rock it back and forth. Find that flat place. And you can just go one direction and pick it up and come back. And if you're comfortable with it, you can do this. Circles are okay. And I'm going to show you another technique right now um, that you can do, you know, to freehand it as well with the stone in your hand. One of the reasons I like the diamond stone so much is they're really light and pretty easy to hold on to if you have to do some, some sort of freehand work. So I have this next stone. This is a 600 grit diamond stone. And you could probably start with that grit if your knife isn't in too bad a shape. Um, if you have some nicks, or um, not nicks on this, but if you have some unevenness on your edge, you're not flat, you might want to start with a coarser stone. Now this, this method here is one where you really need to feel the stone on there. If you had to, you could put this up on a block. You could get it into a vise and hold it. Uh, you know, so you basically have another hand, so you're not really fighting the, this, all this. I'm fairly comfortable with this, and so I'm just going to do it this way, just to get that nice and flat. And it does take practice, I mean, it's something that you can maybe pick up an old knife and try it on an older knife that is in really rough shape first. So that's the 600. This is the 1200. And we're going to go to the 1200 and do the same thing. And I'm not pushing really all that hard right now. I mean, I have, you know, a nice pressure through my fingers onto the stone. That's the other cool thing about these stones, the diamond stones, is you can really, you know, kind of park your hand in there and not worry about holding it on, holding onto it just from the side. You can get in there and really have a lot of control with your fingers. So this guy is just about ready for 
water stone. All right, the next stone is the Japanese water stone. And I've gone over this in my other sharpening videos. It's really critical to keep your stones flat. And that's the beauty of the diamond stones is you can keep your Japanese water stones flat. So I'm gonna take just a second and work this stone on here to make sure I have at least an area that's pretty flat here to work that, uh, that back on. I don't wanna be fighting the uh, trough because that'll just basically, you know, won't work as well. It'll still do the job, but you'll, you'll get some, uh, you'll be fighting the stone, I guess is what I'm saying. So I'm gonna use this part right here. When you do the, when you do the um, stone flattening, you really need to clean it every once in a while because it loads it up pretty quick. You can see how fast those diamonds cut that Japanese stone. Okay, so we're gonna go with this area right here and get some more water on there. Yeah, we got a nice flat spot right there. So, same, same. And this one will really start to polish that. A little trickier to hold on to, and you know, you really have to watch your fingers. You sure don't want to slip. Okay, so our next step will be to set up our bevel on the bottom of the knife. Um, let's go. We're going to go to this 1200 grit stone first. And just you want the stone to hit the back of the bevel and the front of the bevel. Lay it on there and then just raise it up just a little bit. You cannot get this too steep. And if this gets too steep, then the knife will chatter. It won't want to cut. So you want the knife to skive into the material. So I'm going to start. It's the same thing. And I know I'm freehanding all this and you just don't want it to to freak you out because it just takes some practice. It's really not that hard. And we're going to go around and around here. And you can hear that working on there. Wipe that off. And when I wipe things off, I'm, as I'm wiping, I'm moving away from the edge as well so I don't get cut. So you can see we're pulling this micro bubble up here. And that is meeting this. And now I can start to feel a burr on this side, which is what I want to feel right here. Because when we have that burr, then we know we're down to the edge. So then we're back to the Japanese water stone. And you know, you could push this into a, a corner of something or, or lean it into a vise. Um, you know, it's something to give you a little bit more purchase. I'm fairly, like I said, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with doing this. But, um, I'm going to pull that edge up. And you can also do the technique where you take a Sharpie, a magic marker, I've talked about that in a couple of other videos. Okay, I talked about the magic marker, the Sharpie, blacking the edge out, and I thought, well, I may as well do it so people can see what I'm talking about here. So I'm going to take that Sharpie and I'm going to go ahead and black that out. So I'm going to let that dry for just a second. We'll see if we can't pick this up. And if I'm too steep, which I'm going to do here, just because. Right? You can just see where I'm hitting, just not even a 64th of that edge. Okay, so that's too steep. I don't want that. What I want is most of that 
to go away. And you can really see it. All right, last step. We're, we'll use the stropping stick. It's an eight to 10 ounce leather glued onto a uh, piece of closet lining. It's a couple inches wide. You could use an old belt if you had one that you wanted to use. Um, any good leather will work. And then I have that glued on there with some barge cement. And in contact cement will work. And closet lining has a little flex to it. I like that. We're going to go one direction here. You just pull it. feel it if you're on the heel you can tell you're, you can tell when you're on the edge and if you're a little steeper on the edge that's okay because you're not really removing material at this point you're just polishing it so we do that and you can flip it over and just barely hit that back in other words you're keeping it pretty flat. Well, okay, so we're stropped and we have a mirror polish on the edge that you can see. Um, and it's nice and flat on the back. And I will hook my thumbnail. This is how I test stuff to see if it's sharp. You can try to shave hair with it, which this knife will definitely do right now. But you can feel it and you can slide your thumbnail along it. And if you feel any rough spots and you know there aren't you have a burr still. But right now that's nice and smooth all the way down and it immediately grabs the nail. That's a good way to gauge your, your bite on your edge. And that is how I sharpen a chair builder's draw knife. You can use that technique to sharpen any draw knife you may have and uh, stay sharp. Mm -hmm.